reading a book that you might be interested in. It's called Journey in the Wilderness, New Life for Mainline Churches by the author Gil Rendell. His name may be familiar to you. He once worked for the Alban Institute. He now works for the Texas Methodist Foundation. And he's written lots of things that are helpful to churches. Part of what I was struck by in the part of the book that I was reading just the other day is something called the Johari Window, J-O-H-A-R-I. Now, I'm sure I learned about this when I was taking basic psychology classes long ago when I was in college, but I had kind of forgotten about it. A Johari window is a way, you kind of end up with a grid like in lots of things, but it's a way for us to think about the kinds of public personas that we have, and then also the things that other people notice about us. He uses it, Mr. Rendell uses it, of course, to think about churches and the kind of public persona that a church has, and then what other people notice about us. It struck me that this is probably one of those places where pastors and congregations can sometimes get kind of sideways with one another. Because when pastors come into a congregation of whatever size, they're the newcomer. They're the ones who have a fresh set of eyes to see what is happening there. I was reminded of an incident when I was a co-pastor in Burlington, Iowa, of a church of about 400 members. A woman who had been on the session for a long time, was very active in the church, had been there for decades in that church, stopped me as I was coming out of Sunday school with children one Sunday and told me that her grandson would be there the next week. And he's a, he was in seventh grade. She wondered if in our seventh grade Sunday school class, the boys and the girls met together or if they met separately. Now this was in the early 2000s. And like many mainline churches at that time, we were struggling to have 15 or 20 kids in worship, let alone separate classes for each of the grades. So those 15 or 20 from worship would then be in Sunday school. We didn't divide them up by grades, and we certainly didn't divide them up by girls and boys. But here was this woman who was very active in the congregation, who had this idea of what Sunday school was like that had no resemblance to what the reality of Sunday school was like in those days. So let's think about what others notice about the context of mainline churches now that we may not notice. He names four ways in which we have kind of been disestablished from where we once were in our society. The first thing he talks about is the individualization of religious experience. People now believe, kind of more than ever in our history in this country, that they can have their own kind of religious or spiritual experience and they don't really need to involve other people in it. There is also kind of a widespread distrust of institutions. I sometimes think of this as kind of the Googleization of the world. We all think that we are our own experts now, that we don't need institutions to teach us anything, that we can just look it up for ourselves. Then he points to our demographics in mainline denominations. And he reminds us that we are not losing members in general because people are mad or something like that. We're losing members in general because we are not having enough babies. Members of our churches are passing away as they always have. But we in the mainline denominations are not having enough babies to replace them. And then there is the rise of other world religions in our context. In America, there are many more religions being practiced now than there once were. And that's part of our disestablishment as organizations, as mainline churches. So if you think about this Johari window idea, the way other people see us, they can see that we are losing influence because of all these things that have happened in our society. And so we have to decide how to respond. For many congregations, we have been membership-based organizations. That is, the question that we ask whenever we want to make a decision about how things should be done is, will this keep our members happy? Will this satisfy the people who are already here, already sitting in our pews? But in this time of disestablishment of mainline churches, of all these things that are happening in society that are really beyond our control, Rendell suggests that we need to move from being membership organizations to being purposeful organizations. And he says that the difference is that we need to stop asking if our own members are happy, are happy about what we are doing. And instead, we need to ask, are people's lives being changed by what we are doing? 
So I encourage you to have that conversation in your own Sunday School class or your own session. Think about what you are. Are you a membership organization or are you a purposeful organization?